Go. <laughs> I've got this Razer 24 volt go kart that I've been using with a single 24 volt cobalt power tool battery here. And today I'm going to upgrade it to 48 volt. And I have my 48 volt 1000 watt controller here. And also I'm going to upgrade it to a foot pedal instead of a uh, the original thumb drive. So first of all, more voltage means more speed. It also means more torque. So it's really helpful if you go uphill a lot. And unfortunately, more speed and torque come with a price. There'll be a lot more heat generated in the motor because this motor is a brushed motor. That's why you see a heat sink and a fan on top of the motor. But more of that later. To upgrade this go-kart from 24 volt to 48 volt, simply put, you only need three things, a 48 volt battery pack, a 48 volt brush DC motor controller, and a speed throttle control. Let's take a look at the battery pack. This is a couple of Cobalt 24 volt power tool battery packs that come from my cordless drill. I just modified the USB connector so I can get a couple of wires coming out of the unit so that I can connect it to my go-kart. Each pack is 24 volts, so two of these connected in series to produce 48 volts. If you take a look at the inside of the battery pack, you see it only has 18650 lithium ion cells. But these are not ordinary cells. They are high discharge cells that are made to provide high current to output. You can also use laptop cells, but you have to put a lot of them in parallel, like maybe 10 or more in parallel. But as you can see here, there's not a lot of room for a big battery pack on the back of this go-kart. Another option is to get four 12 volt lead acid battery packs like these. But again, there's no room for four of these uh, lead acid battery packs here. Even if you can squeeze four lead acid battery packs in here, it will weigh a ton and makes it less portable and less efficient. The controller I use for this project is a 48 volt 1000 watt brush DC motor controller. This is the same controller I use for my Razer electric scooter. I made a very detailed video on it and I'll put a link in the description if you want to learn more about it. This is a very capable controller. I was able to push it up to 2000 watts in my last test with my electric scooter and it still ran like a champ. The throttle I'm using is a foot pedal throttle. The original throttle was a thumb throttle, but I found it very tiring on the finger when using this throttle. Plus it's right on the steering wheel, so you have to use your hands to steer the wheels at the same time your thumb pressing on the throttle. It makes you tire really quickly. So I go ahead and remove this thumb throttle and install this foot pedal throttle instead. It is a proportional throttle control. What that means is the acceleration will depend on how much pressure you step on the pedal. This is a very good and very sensitive throttle. I can go real slow if I just feather the throttle very lightly. The only drawback of this throttle is that when you press it down, the whole thing comes through. So you cannot put it flat on the floor. You have to elevate the base so that when you press it down, it has room to clear. That means you have to drill a hole on the floor or you have to elevate high enough so it can clear the bottom. I use a piece of plywood and cut it right at the center so that it would clear every time I press it down. That way I don't have to drill a hole on the floor of my go-kart. Other than that, the installation of this throttle is quite easy. It comes with three prong wire that is color coded and you just have to match the color of the wire to the controller and you are good to go. I also install a fuse switch 
This acts both as a switch and a fuse. Inside the switch, there's a 30 amp fuse that is replaceable. The switch also acts as a safety disconnect so that in an emergency, I just pull it up and it will disconnect and turn off the whole system. There's also another advantage of using this switch. Every time I connect the battery, it produces a big spark. Sometimes the spark is big enough to burn the plastics on my XT60 connector. So by using this switch, the spark stays inside the switch every time I turn it on and also safer that way. So basically that's all I need for upgrading this go-kart to 48 volts. But I go a couple steps further and install an LED headlight and a 12 volt auxiliary battery. I also install a heatsink and a cooling fan to cool down my motor. This is a 2S3P lithium ion battery pack. It has 618650 cells as salvage from old laptop computer battery. I also made a balance connector so I can balance charge the battery using my Tonigy balance charger. It is 12 volt so I can run my LED headlight and my cooling fan at the same time. There are two connectors on the battery pack. One is the main 12 volt connector and the other is a balance connector. I use a main 12 volt connector for my LED headlight. The balance connector has four pins. In order to exploit the balance connector to run on 12 volt, I remove the two middle pins for the male connector and solder my cooling fan wire to it. The outside pins are connected to the main 12 volt terminals of the battery pack. So by using just two outer pins, I'm able to run anything 12 volt coming from the battery pack. And in this case, I use this connector to power my 12 volt computer fan. The LED light is just a regular 12 volt 10 watt LED light. I mount it on a piece of aluminum, drill a hole, and mount the whole thing right onto the steering wheel screw. The aluminum piece serves both as a mounting plate and a heat sink to dissipate heat for the LED. Installing the LED is very simple. I just solder a 5 ohm resistor to the positive terminal of the LED and run the wire directly to the battery. And that's it. Now let's talk about this contraption here. I've got a heat sink on the side for the motor and a cooling fan on top of it. I've used this 48 volt gold cart for a few days and I've noticed the motor does get a little bit too warm for comfort. It's not extremely hot, but hot enough for me to feel like I need to find a way to cool it down. I use a heat sink salvage from old projection TV. I cut it round so that it would clear the chain and the sprocket. I drill a couple holes and tap the side cover so I can secure some screws on it. The heat sink serves both as a cooler and a chain guard. You can see here it provides a good protection for any fingers trying to get to the chain. This is absolutely necessary if you have small children. The cooling fan is just a regular 12 volt computer fan. It's being powered by this 12 volt auxiliary battery. The way I mount this fan is just use a couple of zip tie and mount it right on the heat sink. And it holds on just fine. After I put everything together, I use my tachometer to calculate the no load speed. This is just the speed of the wheel when it's not under load and it's calculated to be about 27 miles per hour. In actual use, it's about 20 to 22 miles per hour depends on the rider's weight and the terrain.
Go. Overall, it's a pretty good upgrade. I'm able to do things now with this car that I haven't been able before. Not only does it give me more speed, it can also go uphill with ease. I did some modification to the wheels that enabled me to spin like a pulsar. And I'll show you all that in my next video. And I'll see you next time.